We're moving to a small town just outside of Lisbon in Portugal. And I guess the, the most positive motivation is that uh, my husband and I have reached an age where we think we have one more adventure left in us. And it seemed more exciting and challenging to go somewhere new than to last out our final years in a place that we've become, if anything, too comfortable in. Ah, it's because you're too comfortable or because you've become uncomfortable in Britain? Well, it's a combination. Um, I am distressed with what's happening to Britain. And you know, first off, I should, I should tell you that the idea of leaving here really tears me up. Uh, I've been here the vast majority of my adult life. Uh, my feelings about the country are strong, though that also means that the, the, my criticisms of the country are strong. So, um, I mean, you're right that I've been up to my neck in the culture wars here, but I also get a little sick of it. And, and I'm, I am despairing on Britain's account that the country seems to have uh, adopted the, the conflicts of another country. Mine. The, the United States. Right? So all this, what we call woke, for lack of a better word, I know we're all sick of it. Uh, it, it comes from somewhere else. And I, don't, I think that's undignified, and, <laughs> honestly. Um, okay. Come up with your own screwed up ideology. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's quite damning, that somebody who comes from the United States, has lived in other parts of the world, in Africa and so on, and... Um, transparently likes this country, loves yes. it, yes. is now saying, can't you even get your own crazy ideology yes. uh, uh, right? Uh, let's come back to that to, in a moment. I, I wanted to ask you, because it's a politics show, um, one of the things that you talk a lot about, or you write a lot about, is the power and reach of the state and government. We're saying this morning that um, Mr Sunak wants to uh, essentially, or it is said, wants to stop people smoking even in the outdoors. And obviously, it's healthy, it's, it uh, uh, stops people smoking in other people's faces. Um, how do you feel about that? Healthy policy or nanny state? Um, Heavy-handed nanny state. Uh, not a very nice nanny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this comes down to... Uh, one of my biggest problems with the direction of travel in the UK, and that is it's become increasingly authoritarian um, rather than bringing the people along with and trying to uh, cr go in a certain direction by persuasion, by leading people uh, and ma giving people a positive reason to do things. This has become um, a very uh, authoritarian regime, which uh, tries to manipulate through punishment. Well, let me push back on that. You and I have discussed this in, in, in other contexts, but you say it's an authoritarian state, but you've written a lot about, for example, the cancel culture. And isn't the problem there that maybe some of our institutions, our media, our universities and so on, aren't authoritarian enough that the grown-ups when confronted with, you know, a demonstration that says this person must not speak here, and you've had this experience mm -hmm. yourself, um, basically cower in the corner or back out of the room, that actually they're not strong enough. Well, I certainly think there's been a failure on an institutional level to stand up to the ideology that we're talking about that I have been opposing for years. Um, so, yes, you're right that there's a a kind of capitulation or selling out to a particular element, often out of fear. Um, but on a governmental level, uh, legislation is being designed in, in a very punitive direction, the way net zero is being pursued. The energy uh, bill that passed without any real deliberation uh, most recently uh, has all kinds of uh, powers in it to you know, basically break into your house with the police and force you to get a smart meter. Um, they connect, and, and, and with the power to put you 
in jail for up to a year if, if you uh, don't comply with the new environmental regulations. But, and these are just householders. We're not talking about people who run companies or something. But, this, is, this is the way things are done. And I, I, th we're a long I way think- We're not from Putin or anything like that, aren't we? Oh, oh of, of course not. But I, I would like to see a little more contrast. I mean, the, the thing that really damaged my emotional re relationship to this country was COVID. And it, it demonstrated, I mean, literally overnight, that, that this country would capitulate to uh, what became a quasi-totalitarian regime. Again, no persuasion, right. no we can all be sensible here, no advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, more, more rules, rules, that, rules. That, that is quite an extreme, uh, even for a brilliant writer, quite an extreme proposition. We are not a totalitarian regime. No one like it. No, but um, overnight, uh, Britons gave up virtually every civil liberty that they ever the common good? ever imagined was there for, the, for the common good. Ostensibly, but you could have had the same results without that kind of top-down, okay. you know, police arresting people walking in the forest. Um, one of the things that you've written about recently, which is about uh, the state's responsibilities and so on, uh, is the issue of what you called heritable guilt, inherited mm -hmm. guilt, and the, the, the case in point is slavery reparations. Um, and your basic case is, how can you make people who live today responsible for something that happened uh, centuries back. Is that really, is it really as simple as that? Um, morally, yeah, yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, it, it's, it's in the Bible that, uh, that the son is not to inherit the guilt of the father. That is, that used to be a fundamental um, Christian principle. And I think that we've lost it. Uh, we now think that uh, we are responsible for everything our ancestors ever did. And, you know, between uh, slavery and the Industrial Revolution with, it, which it, with its unintended consequences of, of CO2. No, we have to draw a line. We didn't make those decisions. It's hard okay. enough to take responsibility for the things you do in the present. I wish we could talk much more and I hope actually you'll be coming backwards uh, back to to us from Portugal from I time to time indeed. and we'll see you on the show again I hope so Lionel Shriver thank you very much indeed pleasure to talk to you Trevor